Kids need to be engaged, interested, and motivated to even sit through a video. While this isn't always easy to do, I've tried to find videos with likable speakers, compelling topics, and inspiring stories. And don't worry, they're not just for kids. These are awesome talks for adults as well. Let's look at some motivational TED Talks for kids. Before we begin, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Here we go. First up at number eight, 10 ways to have a better conversation. One of my all time favorites. I'm worried about our kids' capacity to communicate face to face. Check out how many youngsters have their faces in their phones at a restaurant. Recently graduated students need to improve their communication abilities, managers say. Celeste Headley, a radio host, shares wonderful conversational and listening advice. She quotes a high school teacher named Paul Barnwell from The Atlantic. I came to realize that conversational competence might be the single most overlooked skill we fail to teach. Kids spend hours each day engaging with ideas and each other through screens, but rarely do they have an opportunity to hone their interpersonal communication skills. It might sound like a funny question, but we have to ask ourselves, is there any 21st century skill more important than being able to sustain coherent, confident conversation? Number seven, promising test for pancreatic cancer from a teenager. I adore this one. Jack relates his tale of discovering a hopeful cure for pancreatic cancer as a youngster. Jack demonstrates some of my favorite traits, thinking, process, initiative, perseverance, determination, courage, and comedy. He's a great speaker who will keep your kids engaged. Favorite quote? You don't have to be a professor with multiple degrees to have your ideas valued. Just imagine what you could do. He did that all by himself? One of my daughters asked at the end. Yep, he did, and you can too. Number six, grit, the power of passion and perseverance. Angela Lee Duckworth left consulting to teach seventh grade math in New York City. She was intrigued by student success. This is her narrative of discovery. Here's a sneak peek. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. Grit is having stamina. Grit is sticking with your future, day in, day out. Not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that future a reality. Grit is living life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. Want another excuse to show your kid? Angela emphasizes that grit kids graduate and succeed in their chosen occupations. Let's teach our kids the value of tenacity and perseverance. Number five, what makes a good life? Lessons from the longest study on happiness. This discourse is more appropriate for older children in my opinion. Robert Waldinger, the author of the world's longest study on happiness, explains what constitutes a good life. If your kids are having trouble following along, skip to 551 for the highlights. So what have we learned? What are the lessons that come from the tens of thousands of pages of information that we've generated on these lives? Well, the lessons aren't about wealth or fame or working harder and harder. The clearest message that we get from a 75 year study is this, good relationships keep us happier and healthier, period. I appreciate the emphasis on the value of connections and friendships. Number four, weird or just different? Derek Sivers' talk on the importance of perspective is the shortest on this list. It teaches children that we all experience the world through different lenses and that we must be mindful of our preconceptions and biases. Derek had the following thought. There's a saying that whatever true thing you can say about India, the opposite is also true. So let's never forget that whatever brilliant ideas you have or hear, that the opposite may also be true. Number three, living beyond limits. Amy Perdue's message is great, but with an illness and a near-death experience, it could be frightening for young children. Amy contracted bacterial meningitis when she was 19 years old, and after a protracted battle for her life, she survived but lost both legs below the knee. As a professional snowboarder, she demonstrates how believing in those dreams and facing our fears head on allow us to live our lives beyond our limits. Her message was simple. If your life was a book and you were the author, how would you want your story to go? Number two, why some of us don't have one true calling. This is an excellent discussion, particularly for high school students who are trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. This question still causes stress in my coaching practice, whether someone is starting high school, graduating from college, or making a job shift in their 40s. Emily's eloquent message. If you have multiple dreams, goals, and interests, there's nothing wrong with you. What you are is a multi-potentialite, someone with many interests and creative pursuits. This idea is supported by statistics. According to studies, just 27% of college graduates have a job linked to their major. The average person changes occupations 10 to 15 times during his or her career, and people change careers three to seven times over their lives. Emily then goes on to discuss the talents and benefits of being a multi-potentialite. 
including examples of successful people who have established a life that works for them. Number one, how I harnessed the wind. Amazing and motivating. With little schooling or resources and inspired by poverty and famine, William Kamkwamba, 14, built a windmill to power his family's home. When he looked back on his life, he realized it was a fate he couldn't accept. So rather than living the destined life, he opted to change it. This story will not only teach children about courage, determination, and invention, but it will also help them to acquire perspective on what others throughout the world face on a daily basis. He concludes with these wise words. I would like to say something to all the people out there like me, to the Africans and the poor who are struggling with your dreams. God bless. Maybe one day you will watch this on the internet. I say it to you, trust yourself and believe. Whatever happens, don't give up. Well guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching.